What's good? What's good? We are back. We are back. Hello, Marlena Williams, the Postmaster General. Professor Melly Mail, the Postman. We are back in the house today. It is Wisdom Wednesday. Shout out to Yashua Muhammad. What's good, bro? What's good with you? Glad to see you guys are here. As you know, I am feeling better. <laughs> Got my boys back, doing good, uh, progressing each day. Hope you guys enjoying your day. But as you see, it's Wisdom Wednesday, and we got a couple of guests today. Hopefully, they join us shortly. But let's give the wisdom. Our world is a concrete jungle. <laughs> you fight for what you want, or you get eaten by those who want it more. It's just that simple. You fight for what you want. Or you get eaten by those who want it more. Now, guess there we go, and we and we are go. What's good, Ron? Hey, hey, well, how you doing? I'm doing very well. How you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm blessed, bro. I'm blessed. Man, imagine that, man. It, we are all blessed to be here, man, in one form or another, bro, because, you know, the time we're living in has, has uh, uh, evolved and changed, you know, versus um, where we come from years ago, the yesteryears, right? So mm -hmm. we're dealing with what's in front of us. It's a paradigm shift, and uh, we're living in the age of Aquarius, which has... Uh, dramatically change the direction of where we're going. Hello, are you there, Ron? I think Ron booted himself. Shout out to E-Money. How you doing? Oh, e man, what's going on, Ezel? I'm back. There we go. There we go. So, Ron, we have you here today, man. And um, introduce yourself. I can't yourself. even hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Ron? I can't hear you. Go out and come back in. Go out okay. and come back in. Uh, yes, we were, but we only do our job. I hope you guys like this stuff, guys. Can you hear me now? Yeah, he's going out. Can you hear me now? Go out and come back in. Let me go. Let me see. There we go. He went out. So, Dupree, what's happening, bro? Man, Andre, Andreas, what's up, man? What's up, the band? The band is in the house. Add to the stream. There you go. Add to the stream. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I thought what up, sir? Hey, hey. I, I came on early. Oh, yeah. How you doing today, Kenya? I am doing lovely, thank you. Good, good to have you here. And we got Ron. We yes, got sir. Ron in the house. Man, Ron, we've been wanting to have this meeting for quite some time, man, because heard a lot about you, haven't got a chance to really meet you. Mm -hmm. Saw you from a distance, but I think we were passing. I don't know. I think I was I don't know. I think I was over there at Project 43 with uh Ann over there off the corner of what is that, 70 something? 71st, 71st of Crenshaw. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I think you were you were rolling with Big U, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was with Big U. Yeah, I was. Okay. Yeah. So what we want to get at to, man, we want to get into a little bit of your history. And we also want to get into the fact that you're also uh, Raymond Lee Washington's nephew, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We yes, want to talk about that. So let's get started. Can you, you okay? I am so good. I'm just here. I'm here with you guys. I'm I, I'm ready for partying. Ready for partying. See, that's what I like. A team player. Team player. King Ware is always a team player. So where did uh -huh. you grow up at, Ron? Uh, I grew up in the Crenshaw District, uh, formerly known as the 60s, was well, known as the 60s. Uh, I grew up, I was born, was living on 10th Avenue. 
Then as I got about five years old or whatever, we moved to the uh, what they call the over hills, right up up the hill. And I've been living there ever since. My parents uh, purchased a house there and been living there almost 50 years. Did you have any siblings? Yeah, I got two brothers and two sisters. I have an older brother and a younger brother, but I have two sisters in between. All okay. by, my oldest brother is by my dad and someone else, but my mother basically helped raise him like it was her own. So all five, you know, all five of us. So how many of your siblings actually were from 60s? Me, really with me and then my little brother, yeah. Cedric. Oh, okay. Two of you guys, right? Two of you yeah. guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good enough. Good. So let me ask you this. What At what point did you actually become aware of the 60s or knew what that was about? You start paying attention to it. <clears throat> uh, I was in the sixth, fifth, sixth grade. I started paying a lot of attention because I was hearing about the reputation of the 60s back then, you know, names and who they were, the role they played, and how gruesome they was they were, and how, you know, just things of that sort. But I was I was, I knew them pretty young. I knew, I was aware about them pretty young. And, um, so what was so impressive about it? What impressed you? Because there's always something that impresses us to make us gravitate or move towards something. Well, I think it was more or less the, the love and the loyalty within within the, uh, the neighborhood at one point. It was uh -huh. a lot of it was genuine, there for one another, you know. It was a point when I was growing up, you could just see me walking to school or something. One of them would come get me and just take me. You know what I'm saying? To me... You know what I'm saying, and uh, and if we are not in school, like I said, if we ditching, my homies you get out on us and be like, "Why you ain't in school?" And we like, "Huh?" He's like, "Get your ass back in school." So they used to sweat us like that because I got a lot of homies that graduated, and shit, they didn't have scholarships, man. Like to play football, baseball, and all that stuff. So you know, we have a pretty big history of people that play sports in our neighborhood. Daryl Strawberry, uh. Amongst other people, so it was. You grew it was, up with Straw. You actually knew Straw. Well, no, I know his brother Michael. He and uh -huh. uh, I just know that they lived in the hood on Seventh Avenue. They in the, in, the, in the hood though. They grew up in the hood. How much time Michael would Strawberry. you say? How much time did you say that you spent active in 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 that sixty movement? Uh. Let me see. I'd say, because I was, shit, about three, four years before I went to three, jail. Four years. And, what was, and what was the turning point? Because there's always a turning point that leads us either in another direction or we we become, we we find ourselves in fraction of what the, what the law has prescribed. Did so that I, happen to you? What, the law? Yeah, what I'm saying is that Listen, listen to what I'm saying. Like you said, three years, right? Yeah, so right. three years at that three year point, was there something that took you in another direction, or did you come in complications with the law? Well, it took me in. A, in a, well, I think it first started with a lot of money that was made in the neighborhood. You know, and, you know, we was making a lot of money over this man, and um, mm -hmm. I got involved in that. You know, selling drugs or whatever. My homies. That's from over that way has a lot of money and and uh they looked out you know he put money in the pocket if you if you if you're trying to make some money i had big homies that really they really looked out you know what i'm saying like for me it would be my homie uh, a few of my homies looked out for me and um i think it started with that but I what's was that noise huh i don't know, hmm. I, don't know. I don't hear it yeah but uh the turning point for me would be the money making, which was I grasped it that fast. Cause, but what really messed it up is I was trying to game bang and make money, and you can't you can't mix the two together. And I think that was my downfall right there, cause I was still doing the the the, the, the money thing, but at the same time I'm still in the hood doing what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? And that just didn't mix. So you know, it just man, I don't know. Hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. Hold on.
I don't hear any noise. I didn't call him. Mm -mm. Might hear my dog, but he ain't been barking. <laughs> yeah. My dog ain't been barking. Now he barking. That motherfucker, man. <laughs> he be barking too, man. Yeah. Especially when you see somebody walking up the street, he be like, hur, 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 hur. he just be on. Wish I could put a muzzle on his mouth sometime. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. There was a whole nother video playing in the background. Oh. Um, yeah, that was a whole nother video playing in the background. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. <laughs> I had to get out of there. Yeah. And, and, oh, it was just strange. I don't know what that was about, but uh, sorry about that. I apologize. Oh, so uh, pick back up where we was at, Ron. No, I was just saying, I think in hindsight, I just see things. I was trying to mix the two together, and it just didn't work. You know, making money and game banging, you just, it's its kind of hard for both. You know what I'm saying? So I think my downfall, it, it, that that's what it was. That really brought me to a whole nother point. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, man, it was just that fast money. But at the same time, I was still trying to do, I was still trying to be who, I was striving to be as a gang member, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. So so what at what point did you reflect on some of the things that you learned from the older OGs going through your transition of becoming a, a rolling sixty? Because I mean obviously your your Raymond Washington's nephew was did he have any impact on your life or did you have any interactions with him as well? Yeah, I was a kid. Um when Raymond, um I was a kid, uh I slept in the same bed with him, you know. Uh, but only thing I re I can remember as far as Raymond goes is he used to come to my house. Him and my dad was real tight. Um, but he was tight with all his brothers. Don't get me wrong. But him and my so dad. So Raymond's brother. Let me ask you this: Raymond's brother was actually uh, uh, um, your dad. Yeah, he my, he's the oldest. My dad the oldest. His boy. My grandmother had five boys. Uh huh. Don, my daddy was Ronnie Joe, Donald Ray, Reggie, Raymond, and Derrod. Derrod is the baby. Okay. Yeah. Now he had he had a sibling on his dad's side. I think maybe a sibling or two on his dad's side. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. So what was some? Was there so many things that that you can relate to as far as what his cripping was and what yours was? Yeah. We both could fight. <laughs> okay, both. okay. Well, tell us about some of them fights, man. I mean, you I know, was, I'm interested in the hand guards. Yeah, you know, I, 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 growing up, I used to box. You know, I grew up. My, I had a cousin that was a professional boxer on my mother's side, and uh, he used to take me to the Hoover Street gym. What was his name? Oh, uh, Edwin Williams. Edwin Williams. Yeah, and uh, he used to take me to the Hoover Street gym and train me as a kid. But my mother didn't really want me to go in the gym. She was scared for me to go in that ring. I don't know why, but she was scared for me to go in that ring. And uh, so, but he he still trained me and things of that sort. So I know, you know, I took that to the streets or whatever. And you know, man, I just I was known for fighting, man. A lot of dudes know I got a little record. <laughs> so what? Give us a memorable fight that you had, man. That you feel like, you know, was it gave you a good test. For your fighting skills, mm, let me see. I uh, had a fight with a guy. I ain't gonna mention his name. No, you don't have to mention his name. But we was at the uh, we was at the uh, Coliseum, and I think Crenshaw had played manual, and we got into it with the thirties. I ended up fighting this particular cat, man. This dude, I thought, you know, I'm squabbling, but. This dude kind of cracked my chin. He cracked me. And when I went to the dentist, right after we fought or whatever, we got it in. But like maybe a week later, I went to the dentist for, for something about my getting my teeth clean or whatever. And they told me my jaw was cracked. I couldn't believe it, man. Oh my like, God damn. I didn't even know though. I didn't even know. My jaw was cracked. And I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah, the guy hit me. Were you more surprised than hurt? <laughs> No, I didn't even, I didn't even, it didn't really hurt. It used to lock a little bit for a little bit. Uh-huh. 
I'm going to say, why is it locking? Like, but I went to the dentist just to get my teeth clean, and they found out. And when I did the x-rays, they you got your jaw cracked. What? <laughs> he, he, he did that. But I think the most memorable fight for me would be in jail. I had a fight with a dude from Playboy Gangsters, man, and we got it in. We got it in. We we got it in. We squabbled like a mug, but it was it was cool. I mean, it was a mem it was a a lesson to be learned, but also a memorable a memorable fight though. It was a lesson, man. You just can't be thinking that you could be banging on these dudes and now you, knowing that you're gonna see these cats again on their terms. And I kind of ran into this guy on his terms where he wanted to fight, so we end up getting down. That's the mistake many make. Yeah, so I, I came out I came out winning, but it was a good one. At what point did you enter the uh, prison? I entered the prison. I went to jail at 18. I went to jail for a murder. And, not, and at 18 years old, I went to the crib module. Uh, they bust the crib module up. We went to Wayside. I went to the uh, Million Dollar Road, whatever. Then I went to Wayside. I spent two years in the county jail fighting my case, got my time. Uh, so by the time I turned 20, I hit the pen. I hit, uh, the reception center, and then I hit old Folsom. Did you ever feel like you was being tested due to the fact you was Raymond's nephew? A lot of people didn't know. A lot of people didn't even know I was Raymond's nephew because I never told nobody. Uh-huh. Never wanted to, uh, to, uh, be under the shadows of, uh, uncle and i don't even think people would even believe me because i'm a light-skinned dude i'm like one of the light-skinned the lightest person in the family yeah that don't that don't you know that, that so, would be uh recent, recent yeah, but a lot, yeah but you know a lot of people probably wouldn't have believed it anyway they'd be like no you ain't raymond's uncle you ain't raymond's you ain't stuff like that so i i really didn't tell i was only a few people that knew you yeah. know i told but when i got to the system i didn't tell nobody who they were my people, maybe a couple people that talked about Raymond, and I'll probably say, well, that's my uncle. I'm saying that. That really oh. makes you a stand-up guy, man, that you was willing to stand on your own two feet, man, versus using your uncle's legacy to, to prove your manhood. That's, that's I salute you on that, bro. I just, you know, I think I was looking for my own identity at one point. Yeah. When we start, yeah. when we start going to these streets looking for trying to be caught up in the gang lifestyle, I think we we seek acceptance. I, mean, I think everything is about looking for acceptance from other people. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people that join, they use the fact that they didn't have a family, they didn't have parents in their life, or they were, they, they only their mother uh, uh, took care of them or whatever it may be. But for me, my parents took, my, my parents were still married to the day they passed. You know what I'm saying? So I can't say that my parents wasn't there because they was. I remember hanging on the block. I'd be in the hood. My mama would come right around that corner and say, get in the car. Say, what? Get in the car. <laughs> That's what mamas did back then, yeah. right? Yeah, and I used to get in that car with her. But then once I get in that car, I said, okay, you got me today. But tomorrow I'm going right back over there. And I, I mean, that just was, you know, my parents cared, man. They were, they were real concerned about my behavior, man. And I didn't really realize it because I used to think that because I'm, there's five of us in the house, but my mother's take, you know, I feel like she was giving more attention to the other ones under me, but the reality is that those four other siblings that's younger than me, she needed to be there. My, both my parents needed to make sure they was cool. Yeah. And so I took a couple classes in prison, man, and I realized that, man, I was selfish, man. I said, I was real selfish about this, man. I'm looking for attention, and my mother and father had they had the other four siblings, but I'm looking for all the attention. Yeah. Selfish shit. You what made you think you, uh, uh, that was your thinking, or well, that was in your heart? How did that happen? Well, I took a lot of, uh, I took this class called Family Relations in Prison. Uh-huh. It you with uh, insight into your, your family history with your parents and your siblings and what made you go into this lifestyle of criminality and um, why did you do it? And, uh -huh. you know, you really understand that, man, you know, it, it ain't your, it ain't, it's nothing, it, everything we do is basically a choice. 
Yeah. And I realized what I've done, including everything, is a choice. I made a choice to do that. It had nothing to do with me, um, nothing else but me being t- making a choice. I made myself believe, man, it is what it is. Did the environment have anything to do with it? It's still a choice. You know what I mean? Um, my environment, I mean, you can't, you don't want to be noted. You don't want to look, be looked at as no punk or more. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. But it, everything is still a choice. You know what I'm saying? I made the choice to, to, to uh, bump up my ego, my pride, get my name going. Everything was a choice. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's what I stick to, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what it was. Um, do I regret it? A lot of it I do. A lot of it I do, but to the day, I think it, it, it makes me grow into the man I am today. Maybe I needed to come to and do some time to really reflect on some things that, on hindsight, because I really didn't understand at the time. I was a kid that was wrecking myself. I could, I probably wouldn't have made it till I was 21 if I'd have stayed out all because I was out there a while. All right. So, How many years did you spend in prison? I spent 29 years in prison. 29 years. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot, bro. Did let me ask you this. Did you have any in any uh did you come across Monster Cody while you were in locked yeah. up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the what county was that for you. Uh when I first met Monster, man, I met Monster, man. That dude was writing on the on the walls in the county jail. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It was me and my homeboy, uh, Lil Ripper, w- was in the uh, day room. And I seen him. You know, he's writing on the walls or whatever. It was cool. He introduced himself like a monster car. told him who I was. My homie Ripper told him who he was. He was like, I recognize this and that. And he used his name, Monster Cody, but he used his Swahili name, uh, Sanika or whatever. I think his name is Sanika. And uh, so it was cool. Yeah. Man, but was, not even... Was you thinking like, man, was you thinking like, that you was gonna have to fight him or anything? Did that come across your mind, or or did that did his attitude suggest that? Well, I was looking at his body language. You know, I feed off people body language, so it didn't look like to me that he was gonna be one of them dudes to be tripping because he came down. I think he had just got out of prison and he came back, but I didn't see it then. But maybe a month or two later, one of my homeboys got killed on the streets. And uh, my homeboy Casper had got out. He got killed by some rivals or whatever. And uh, I go up. We could. I hit Wayside, and uh, I happened to go to the dorm with Monster Cody's in. But it was a lot of a lot of hoopers up in there, and um, he seen me. So you know, okay. My uncle Perry was in there at the time. Well, he ain't my uncle, but friend of the family. He was in there too. And he was like, uh, he came to me and he was like, you know, Monster Cody in here, man. And he he been tripping on your homies and this and that. And I'm like, for what? That ain't got nothing to do with him. But then I was like, okay. So I couldn't even unroll, unroll my bed. And it was like two or three Hoovers came up to me. And it was like, where you from? And I looked at him. I said, I'm six. He said, you can't be here. You got to go. This Hoover. I said, listen, man, I'm not going nowhere, man. Now this is my ego and my pride talking. I'm not going nowhere. Mm-hmm. Any one of your homeboys head up, but y'all gotta y'all gonna have to beat my ass up in here. Yeah, just what I said. So Uncle Perry, for some apparent reason, he went and got me he, for some reason he went to the police, I guess, and that's my nephew. He ain't supposed to be in here or whatever. And I'm like, man, what are you doing, man? So they call my name, I go out here, and um my security fired my uncle for doing it. Like he just fired on me. Wow. And um, we all was out there handcuffed, and I looked at Monster. I was like, damn, bro. I said, I'll meet up with you again. That's just what I told him. So I'll meet up with you again. But I haven't seen him no more since that time. Mm-hmm. But I respect, I, I I look at it as that was just how, how it went. You know, somebody got killed. It was going back and forth on the street. It came, it came to jail, and it was like a ripple effect. So yeah. I understand that. Do you think your uncle was not aware of the rules of engagement he was just naive to what was going on to the circumstances the reason why he did what he did uh my uncle yes uh no i think that he what he was trying to put together i don't think he would i don't think he fathomed the thought that it would be this it would just, let me ask you this was he a gang member 
Yeah. Raymond was a game man. Yeah. The, your your uncle that was in the in the county with oh, you. Oh, you talking about Perry. No, yeah. uh, um Perry, he grew up on 76 and Wildsworth with Raymond and my uncle Derod and my dad and them. He grew up on the same That's what I'm saying, because it seems kind of strange how he reacted to the circumstance. You know what I mean? Because that wasn't your posture at all, but he he took it upon himself to go to the end. You know what I mean? I guess he called himself kind of help. I don't know. I, I asked him why you do that, man. I said, man, why you do that, man? I I take a ass with me before I go anywhere. And not just the ego talking. I take a ass with me. They're going to beat my ass. Well, I'm going to whoop one of their asses. I, I promise you. So, you know, that's just my thinking. But, uh, Miss Kenya know. always fly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm listening. I'm getting knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been knowing him since he's 15, at 14 and 15. Every time I hear, I'm like, oh, what? Did I miss that? Yeah. So, at what point did you uh, meet Ron, Kenya? Let me ask you a question. Oh, God. Ron, Ron, mm -hmm. what do you mean? About 15, 16 years old? Yeah, about 15, 16. Yeah. Yeah. You guys yeah. went to school together, or yeah, both of you lived at Overhills, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, up in, we used to go places together all that we did it all i had the car so i was yeah. the, i was the one that had the car one of the first ones that had the car so they were all loaded up in my car it it smurf because he is in a wheelchair little loony ron yeah. ron uh baby waco i have the whole young hood in the car i think ron ron something happened he'll be back, he'll be back. Okay. i'll put it back in and what yeah. would you guys go what would that be like can you oh god now, mind you, okay, I'm, I'm, I, I was on the Don side, right? Uh -huh. So they're, they're down the hill. I'm up the hill, but those were my friends. I mean, we went to school together, and of course, my mother preferred me to be with the. She wanted me to be with the, you know, the the guys, a part of the Jack and Jills, all the little preppy boys that were gonna go to Morehouse. Uh, that was not my style. I hung out with my homeboys. They wanted you to go Consolidated Plaza, huh? Yeah. Oh my God. I'm like, that's not going to happen. I mean, they said I was on the Debbie Tom ball. They had no idea before the Debbie Tom ball. I'm in a car with all them and my windows get shut out. I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but we would go to Westwood, Fox Hills Mall of Westwood. That was our hangout spots. So how did you explain your windows getting shot out, Kenya? What was that like? Uh, I, 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 Mom. They broke in my car again and stole my Alpine radio for the second time. It's not my fault. <laughs> Classic. Classic. I did not do it. I did, it, but it would come around. Somebody would always, because my brother was he, he was a Culver City football team, but somebody would always snitch on me, and I had to come. No, I don't hang out with people like that. Are you kidding me, Mom? No, <laughs> I would clean it up all the time. <laughs> yeah, that was. That was the go ahead, Ron. Actually, go ahead. You know, I said that was a crazy moment. We should talk about her, her car got shot up because I was in the car when it got shot up. I think me and Smurf was the only one in the car when it got shot up. <laughs> so let me ask you this: then. How did the Kenya car to come to get shot? Was y'all throwing signs or what was y'all doing? Was y'all uh, throwing? It was, no, it was uh my homeboy in the wheelchair. He had he he had that odds with a rival, I guess. The, the ride would get out the car in the beginning, talk his shit or whatever. Then he jumped back in the car and he went up inside the park because there's only one way in and one way out that park, Kennethon Park. So we go up in there. Oh, yeah. My, my homie Lil Looney go up in there, you know, and had words. We come to find out it's Mansfields, PBGs, Marvins. It's all, all type of gangsters up in there. The whole but, opposition, huh? <laughs> yeah. Man, they got into it. They Pulled out the pistols, nothing happened or whatever. I put, I grabbed uh, my homie Smurf, put him in the car. Now, after maybe a minute after I put him in the car, they drove past and they just shot the car up. They start busting. The car got hit like five or six times. Mm -hmm. I looked at Smurf like, damn it. <laughs> Thank Smurf you. got <laughs> Damn you, Smurf. <laughs> oh, you and, <laughs> and, and, and here's the funny part. After I dropped them all off, right? <laughs> I have a debutante rehearsal for AKA in Pomona, right? So I have to go pick up my date over on Honor Crest over there in uh, Windsor Hills. We had to roll, roll all the way out to Pomona with no windows on one side of the car because they got windows, right? I'm like, it was so cold at night. I was so mad. I'm like, 
of all days, I got to drive to Pomona for my debutante party. I, hours later, there's a shootout, and here I am with the AKAs three hours later. My sister, <laughs> you know my sister, AKA. Yep. <laughs> she AKA right now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so you said there was also a second incident. What was that like? Uh, it was one with my car, the, uh, but we it was many in Westwood. Many, okay, got you, got you. Got yeah, it was many. This one in the car, but I mean, okay. every weekend it was every weekend there was some sort of adventure. I mean, like oh, I remember one, Ron, 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 Ron you, I, I think you were there, Westwood, and remember we were all in Westwood, I think, and then the UCLA uh the campus police detained us all, and then I was, I think, my mother was the only one that was called. I'm like. For real? I said, why are we being detained? What do we do? They they just, I don't know, always mess with us. It would be a group of us going together. And I'm mm-hmm. like, really? I said, I okay. I was in jail when that happened. I was yeah. in jail. You, were, you, were you in jail at that point? I was already okay. in jail. I was in jail when that happened. I remember. Yeah. I, so, I think me and Lamont was in jail. Baby Waker was in jail. Yeah. We were both in jail already. Out of that 29 years, did you spend any time on the level fours in the hole? Yeah, I, shit, man. I, I started off in Folsom. Shit, I got started off in Folsom, uh, old Folsom. And um, I stayed there. Then we opened up Lancaster level four. Okay. And um, from there, I uh, went to the level three. Spent some time on the level three. Still, you know, in my isms. Were you ever approached by the Blue Notes or CCO or any of that? Was you ever involved in that? No, no. It, um, a lot of my G homies is on the paperwork as you would. And um, uh, no, nah, one of my big homies that uh, I was in the county with, he had he had got out and came back. But one thing he he I used to be in his cell talking to him on his name is uh Motor Mouse, a scar. Yeah, no Motor Mouse. Yeah, so I wanted to see. I'm talking to him, man. We talking and everything. He's showing me some stuff, and he and he told me, he said the one thing you don't do, bro. Please, just don't get on the paperwork, man. Yeah. He told me that. He said, don't get under no paperwork, bro. Don't. I do noticed it. that about a lot of the guys that 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 was you know had had ranking or had some type of status within the CCO or the Blue Notes. They always told their younger homies to this veer away from that don't come i guess because at that time maybe it was on a decline i don't know i don't know but i think yeah. originally it started off as one thing but as it evolved it became something else and then that's when it got all kind of yeah. convoluted so to speak but um interesting though There's a few cats that on both sides cco and blue like my boy sparks big spark huh? he played a big, big influential in in, in in my knowledge too okay he, Got a lot of knowledge from Sparks because Sparks, Sparks, he's level headed. He think before, react, um, and he love to play chess. So you know, I just I yeah. used to, you know, uh, who else I used to spend to Ike Battle from Great. Um, there's a few Big Rebo from Park Village. Yeah, I know Big Rebo. That's my homie. <laughs> Reed, man, double OG. Yeah. Uh, who else, man? My boy Holo Ray from Hoover. Uh. Uh, my boy uh, Trey Bone from A Trey Gangsters, uh, Robert Stewart, um, Crazy D, May Trey. I mean, I mean, it's a lot of people, man. That right, 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 right. Been around that I've 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 learned I've grown to have some type of, of a relationship with them. Well, well. So let me ask you this, Ron: How long you been home from that twenty nine, uh, twenty years? I've been on three years. I'm over three years. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. hard has it been to adjust back to society? Well, you know what? It, it's hard, man. It's hard, but you just got to take your best step forward, man. That's all I do, and I don't even think about it. I just I just work. Because I've been working since I've been home. Great. You know? So then my you got great I'm, friends like Kenya, Big U. Yeah. And, you got yeah. people that's around you, you know, that's yeah. been your friend forever. They blessed me, too. When I came home, I was blessed decent. And, um... My dad passed away, so you know now I got this. He got this. All this, so I, now I'm really understanding what the significance of paying bills are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, ah, damn. 
That's <laughs> rough, bro. So let me ask you this. Uh, I don't mean to cut you off. At what point did Kenya approach you with the project, though? That's what I want to get to. Okay, well, I approach, you know what? Kenya, we came together with this, with this, with this, uh, because the thing was, when I spoke to Kenya, we all kicked it in my living room, me, her, and my boy, Baby White. We talked. And I told her that I have a I have journals because I used to journal in prison, just write in my journal, just write. And I got a lot of I did a lot of writing. Wow. So she was like, well, why don't you turn them journals into memoirs? Can you always telling me something to that degree too? Yeah. Yeah, she did that. Yeah, and I was thinking about mm, okay, I'll think problem, about it. Can you? But it went huh? to, yep. yep. <laughs> money, money, money. Money, money, money. <laughs> Went from doing memoirs to doing a documentary about my uncle because it was like, man, we need to do a documentary about Raymond because it's 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 a lot of stuff that people don't understand or don't know because all this snowfall, all these other little movies they coming out with. If it wasn't for this, it wouldn't be a snowfall. It wouldn't be this. It wouldn't be that. So I'm True. like, you right. I True. feel you right. So we started that. We started doing the documentary. Big, then we drop that's when we involved Big U. The, the television series, we got two. So a documentary that's, uh, you know, oh. already seven hours in, and then the television series. Awesome. So yeah. how excited were you, Kenya, to be a part of this project? Because, you know, you you, you actually sat down with the mom, with um, Raymond's mom. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so we had to, Ron Ron and her and I got on the phone because we had to get her blessings and her permission, you know, because the life rights are, you know, that's her son. I mean, he when he passed away, he was not married. He, so moms handled everything. Moms paid for everything. So we had to go to her to get all paperwork done. And she was happy. I mean, it brought a tear to her eye because she said, somebody finally wants to talk about my son. You know, they wanted to throw him away years ago. They wanted to just throw him in a garbage can and label him as this horrible human being. And you want y'all want to talk about something good? And yes, please. She was excited. Yes, we have to narrate our own story. You can't allow these people to continue to narrate our stories. This is one of the reasons that the, the I talked to everybody and inspired me because I want to be able to for us to narrate our own stories in our own words based on our own self-knowledge and not have it interpreted by individuals that don't know us or know our culture. Exactly. And, so, and that's part, that's part of, that's, that's when it gets kind of tricky because I've been in Hollywood, black Hollywood for over 25 years. Right. And it's normally a white man that tells that story. And why is that? Well, when you approach the black people who are famous, they want to shy away from it. They don't, it's not, it's not necessarily the white people are taking it. The blacks that have the power in Hollywood, they're above the Crips now. They don't want to talk about the Crips. You know, that's taboo. You know, they don't want to do that. The white people know, look, that's going to make us some money. So let me get involved in it. And that's what I've been, mean, I think um, Ron can tell you that's what we've experienced. I mean, we've been getting, so much love, and mostly all the love has come from others, the other people. Yeah. I, I I bring him on a lot of um because I want him to understand the business and how to pitch a project. He's been on two major calls with me with two major networks. We had um you know Zoom calls with them, and he's got to see the talk, the lingo, what it takes to pitch a project, how long it takes, executives how all these things happen. And he's like, wow, you really got to break down a story for an hour. You got to break down five seasons in one hour because then people want to know the bottom line. Yep. How much money are you going to make me? How long are you going to make me this much money? That's, there it is. You know, so it's, oh, it, 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 it's ongoing, but it, it, it's a, it's battle. a battle and we're going to win. There it is there. How, how, how much time and how, how big of an effort was it to assemble a team to do this thing right, to get this documentary the way you wanted or the way you guys saw it or the way Ron written it out? 
Yeah. Well, for the television series, the first thing you, the first thing is first, you got to get the lead, the, you got to hire an amazing uh, a lawyer team. And I got three amazing lawyers, um, Century City. You got to have money to, to put, to retain them for the duration. And they got to draw, draw up all the life rights. P things have to be signed. Um, then you have to assemble your team. So um, let's talk, let's take a crit project, right? Uh -huh. um, you can't have a, a crit project in LA unless you align yourself with the right person. And when we got going, when we got the sizzle, that's when me and Ron went to Big U and, you know, asked him to be a part of it. And he was, of course, gracious because that's, you know, part of his do book. anything. You can't, yeah. you can't, so you wouldn't be able to do it. So when you say sizzle, I just want to, I don't want to skip over that part. What do you mean by sizzle? Okay. So, when you put a project together, the first thing you want to do, you have two major things to do when you're putting a project together. You got to assemble, a, get a deck, and you have to do a sizzle reel. A sizzle reel is about one minute to three minutes of kind of putting the story in a cluster. You got to, you want to, you try to sell your product. So you have to make this strong enough to uh, be enough so people, networks that view it will get the idea, they're impacted. They see your vision. It's a selling tool. So it's a little mini movie of your story. And back in the days, you might have been able to sell a project with just an idea. Well, now you have all your streaming services that are completely lazy. They want you to do all the work. They want you to come to the table with a whole package deal. That's your sizzle, your story Bible, your pilot script, your deck. Your life rights, they want everything done. And what kind of person to do it? Because you've been spending so much time in this in this circle, in this life, you understood every aspect and element of uh, everything that they need that was needed to make this project go through, right? Oh, it's yeah, I got a team that 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 does it, you know, but I know how it needs to be done. I I I, I tell them what I want and it's done, then you know when you initially when you get everything you still have to have your agent or your attorney because i can't just send my project to netflix they won't they do not accept unsolicited material meaning that if you have an idea to do the postman story right you have to get your agent at william morris or, or a C, C, caa one of them or a lawyer to submit it for you because they don't want to be sued because back in the days they had a lot of things that people were still in projects so mm -hmm. I can't submit it. My lawyer has to submit it. Oh, uh, got you. Or agent to, to protect you. everybody. Got you. That's, That's why. Yes. Yeah, so we have to keep our lawyers on payroll each month. They have to be paid. We can't. We have to. We can't move around without them. So people, when they they come to me, oh, I need your help. Well, it's a lot of stuff you got to do yourself. You got to get an attorney. You know, you got to do this leg work yourself. You know, I had something come across my desk yesterday. One of my my uh, a rapper friend out of New York, um, he has a some a project already done. And I was explaining to them, look, you got to, you know, I got to walk it in because my lawyers and my name is on the line. I mean, unless you want to go get your attorneys and then you're going to have to, you know, get the relationship. I have those already and those are priceless. So, you know. <laughs> It has to represent my brand well. So it's a lot, Melly, to doing it. I mean, people I hear. I this totally movie. understand because, you know, I've been watching Bosco do his stuff. And I've been yeah. like, yeah. yeah. Bosco, I talked to them earlier. And your son, Bosco, by the way, um, I adore him. He, this the most amazing guy. And right. that boy can call right. me at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's very few people that can call me up that, like, I need you to do something because he he's a man of his word. I came and did some work for him. Consistent. That boy, that consistent. Yeah, he pays me. He don't. Most people don't want to pay you. Oh, that boy pays me. And then he called. Can you um, can you send your 1099 over business? He knows when I send you money, I need that tax form to follow. So uh, you pay the taxes on your money. I just sent you. <laughs> So again, let's, let's, let's back up a little bit, can you? So what was it that sold Big U on the project? Because I imagine both you and Ron had to talk to him about it, right? Big U, it's a, it's a lot of people that have been trying to come and infiltrate the Crips for years, and they'll put a stop to it, right? 
because it came from people that Big U has known his whole life. He's known us, you know, since we were, you know, before we knew ourselves, he knew us. So we, we didn't come to him until we had everything perfected. Uh -huh. Meaning the sizzle was done and all the little things were done for him to see. And he was first proud of us. He's like, wait, 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 wait. when did y'all do this? We're in a pandemic. When did y'all have time to put this together? <laughs> Oh, we did this like two months ago. So he kind of like, anchored it across the line then, right? At the yeah, end. Yeah, because he was working. You, you've you been a part of his project. He was working right. on that. So we were working on our Brandon thing when he was doing Hip Hop uh, Uncovered. Right. And when we presented it to him. an amazing was, job on that, by the way. Yeah, oh, yeah. that yeah, They're working on um, season two now. It, bro, I, I mean, I have to get him on the phone at seven o'clock in the morning if I want to have a meeting because he, he's he's on the golf course. Wait, wait, he, wait, wait, he calls me from the golf course. Kenya, hold on. I can't imagine Big U playing golf, but I guess okay. <laughs> wait, he's calling me. He said, Kenya, um, answer your phone. I got an executive. He ca called Ron Ron. I got an executive out here playing uh, t golf with me. He wants to hear about the Raymond Washington story on the golf course. So. We're pitching a project two weeks ago to this That's major what business deals are broker, Kenya. On the golf course. I know, yeah. but bro is out there, got his whole I mean, he's the Tiger Woods of the hood now. <laughs> doing out there doing the work though, right? Out there. Got me and Ron, Ron on the phone with a, a, a freaking FaceTime call on in the middle of the golf course with a, a white guy pitching a project. Ron Ron, how, how excited are you about this project? I'm very excited about it. I'm just, I'm just, I just don't show it a lot because they say I don't show no emotions, but I'm very excited about it. I'm just so anxious for it to happen, but I know it's a process. So I just try to stay grounded and keep doing some other things like working and other things so I can get my mind off of it. Cause I when you say you don't show emotions, you think that's a side effect of prison? Yep. I try to, I work on it every day. Yep, it is. Okay. Okay. I think it I appreciate you answering that too, man. Thank you. Yeah. I know anybody that's working with Kenya, man, she she brings such a light to the room, man. She walks in and I've been with Kenya and man, she passing out hand sanitizer, waters, and making Everything. sure everybody's comfortable, okay, food, whatever you need, she's there. Before you get any ask for it, she putting it in your hand. So I, I know how you know she is, man. She's just a wonderful individual, amazing person to be working with. So I know there's a lot of excitement in the room about this project, what you guys doing and where it's going. And and it's gonna definitely land. And when it lands, it's gonna feel like the first and the fifteenth. <laughs> I, I told I told Bosco, I said, when we do it, we're gonna go to the we all gonna go to an island and just woosa because it's a lot of work. I mean, people, the, the, my God, I mean, let me tell you, this is on everything. You feel, I mean, people, I'll pass, no, no. I mean, you just get those. And I tell Ron Ron, I said, when people pass on the project, that just means that the right person's coming along because we know we got something great. We know that we put in the work and everything is just timing. So I told Bosco, we're going to celebrate both projects. Watch. That's it. But you know what, Kenya, it never ceased to amaze me we, how we love ourselves, but we, but sometimes a percentage of us are people, not, and I'm not saying you're wrong, but a percentage of our people allow other people's opinion to be more influential than your own. You know what I mean? Because one thing you touched on early on, and we, we talked about it, is that intellectual property. Yeah. That is your, that right there, because, yeah. uh, Taken from uh, um, the elder uh, from out of the um, jungles, um, T. T. Rogers, right? He asked yeah. me one day. He said, "What's more important?" He said, "Your history." He said, "Your belief system, or your memory?" And I had to think about that. And then when he, when he when he shot the OGC, and when I thought about it, it's your memory because your memory retains your intellectual properties. Yeah. That's where the that, that's where the value is, right there. And mm -hmm. all you got to be able to is paint a picture to the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they love right. it and they buy it. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah. got something to tell the world. And and I told I was telling Ron, Ron it doesn't even stop here because it's so much stuff. I mean, it, we just want to. I'm one that I will reach back. I 
I know a lot of people have been done wrong and they like, when I get it, I'm never going to reach back. I'm reaching back. I want to, because there's so many talented people from around us that have something. Yeah. And I want their story to be told. I mean, maybe I have to take the hard journey. Maybe I got to go through all the trenches and the storms, all that. I'll take that. Well, you know, there's other stories to be told and we got to just, we just got to, you know, delve in and get into it because there's, there's many stories. There's a lot of uh, context. There's a lot of value to our culture and yeah. the things you've done. And I tell people all the time, Al Capone, Elliot Ness, Scarface, Machine Gun Kelly, Mar Barker, all these people are, 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 are the godfather. They're glamorizing this culture. Yeah. So what makes our culture different? The skin color? Yeah. Because it's it's one and the same. It doesn't it doesn't it's not separated. Only thing that's different is the color of the skin of people that's doing it, right? Yeah. So and we've been through this culture. Why can't we capitalize off of it? We spent Ron spent 29 years in prison. Yeah. I spent 10 in the feds. And we left Kenya out here to do the work. And we come back, she's still here working. <laughs> yeah. Still working from that day, working on I went, it's funny. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I'm moving to a, a house and I was going through, I had paperwork from the last like 15, 20 years, right? Uh -huh. Death Row Records. I'm looking at letters from Death Row Records, this stuff. And all this stuff, I'm like, dang, I didn't realize Hunger Games, Mockingjay, Death Row Records, uh, this everything. I'm like, it's so much stuff here. Like That's another story, can you not to cut you off? Yeah. It's, I mean, I just pulled out 15 boxes full of stories. I'm like, God damn. I was there. Damn. Yeah. So it goes on and yeah. on. I Ron, we we ain't finished because after Raymond's done over here and that's going, we're going to the next thing. Got you. Well, if there's anything I can do or help in or, or be a part of, definitely reach out. Tap in with me. You know how I am. I'm a very easy person to get along with, and yeah, and I want to be a part of the party. I want to join the party too. You the know. Party. <laughs> oh, Tom. Tom. That's it, Ron. Hey, Ron, you guys going to have a great time with this, man. And I appreciate you guys coming on. And I don't want to hold you guys. I know you guys are busy with your schedules. I appreciate you guys taking time out your day. I'm very humbled by that. And, man, please, please continue to do the work. And if you need anything, you need to come on or whatever, we need to talk about it, man. Tap in, man. We'll get it done, man. Thank you. All yeah. right. Appreciate you uh having me on. I have a book coming out soon. Man, uh, talk about that book. Well, the book, book of thought in his own words. And it's basically, like I said, it's my journals that I turned into uh, memoirs. But it also got my Uncle Raymond's letters in there and his handwriting on why he started the Crip movement. It's in that book. So, uh, Oh, that's going to be an awesome book. Here. Everybody going to buy that book. Yeah, they so the hopefully, uh, hopefully within some months or so, uh, we're going to try to uh, uh, get, uh, when you get the book done. I need you to come back and we're going to, you know, we're going to promote the book, bro. Okay. I got you, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, man. One love, Ron. All the it's time. Pleasure is all mine, man. Kenya, you know the vibe. <laughs> you know yeah. the vibe. Yeah. Peace both and uh we'll be talking soon can y'all give you a call during the week okay yes, all right sir. i'll be easy. salute to you please bye-bye bye shout out to the mailroom nation shout out to the mailroom goons that was a very 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 interesting interview i love it i love it i love it anybody got any questions now we get to the questions part because it's wisdom wednesday you know and we got to talk about the wisdom right Let's go, Hood City Click. Let's go. What's going on, E Money, Michelle, uh, Mike Marks? Man, anybody want to jump in the live with me and we can discuss this? What we just heard? Anybody? Uh, I'll drop a link in the chat. Let me go get a link. Uh, let me see. Let me get a link, you guys. Hold on. Just a second. Boom.
Okay, we are back. We are back. We are back. Yeah, I got to get a second phone, Postmaster General. I got to get a second phone so I don't have to keep popping out like this. This is so unprofessional of Melly Mel. This is so unprofessional, the professor. This popping out on us like that. What's going on with him? <laughs> Here I go, guys. So listen, um, any questions? Anybody want to jump in and live and talk about it? What we just heard. Um, anybody want to talk about Raymond or anything that's going on in society? You know how I am. I'm very open. Terrell, what's good with you, bro? Oh, they had questions for the guests. Yeah, I, I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, we got to do things another way. Oh, I ain't knocking that door yet. <laughs> Voice of Reason. Oh, I just dropped the link. I just dropped the link, Bodacious. It's in the chat. Yes, we working on it. Building a plane while we fly it, Marlena. Yeah, I know. I, I I knew I knew you guys had questions for them, but I didn't want to hold them too, you know, because people be busy and they don't want to be restrained to that. I'm glad you see you're feeling. Yeah, I'm feeling much better. I'm feeling absolutely wonderful, Michelle. I dropped the link, Bodacious. I don't know. Did you watch the Killer Wayne interview on KM Video? Nah, uh, you know I I don't. I had to go look at it, bro. That wasn't supposed to come out. I'm going to just say that right there. But, then, you know, hopefully it was good, though. Hopefully it was good. Um, AJI Supreme, what's going on with you, bro? I was from Oaks Park, bro. I was from Oaks Park. Oaks Park came before Midtown. Yeah, I watched Midtown get courted on. I actually watched them get courted on by Doug, uh, Killer, Killer Rob, uh, Gary the Governor, uh, Snake, Daniel Fletcher, Big Chocolate, Silas Cole, uh, Hercules, uh, Big Roy Scott. I saw all that take, I saw all that, I saw all that take down. Yeah. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. What's going on, brother? What's up, man, Mayor? Hey, man, what's happening, man? Let me add this brother. I saw another brother. There you go. Add to the screen. There you go. What's going on, my brother? Man, like, man what's, what's up, baby? Man, I'm what's doing up, good, man. Doing good. Yeah, man. How you guys doing, man? How did you guys enjoy that, that interview, man? Was it? Hey, man. Yeah, that was real dope, man. Yeah, that, it, it energizes me. You know, I have a love for, like, music, entertainment, man. And when she gets uh -huh. going, man, it, it light that fire. But uh, right, I really right. wanted to just jump on, man. I had to, like I say, you just you just watching a brother, uh, Ron Ron, transition back. And I've seen him on different interviews and speak different times, man. He's transitioning very well, man. So I just wanted to just salute that brother, man. You know, that's a... That's a hell of a journey for anybody to survive. You know, yeah, you 29, see people, years, 29 years yeah, you is, see, a, is a long time, man. You know? Right. And you, and you see how people uh, kind of complain after like a year in quarantine at home with TV and the freedom to go outside when they want. That's after one year. Imagine a man having to endure 29 years like that, you know? That's, that's a hell uh -huh. of a situation. That's a hell of a story. We got Marcus in the house. What's up, what's up? What's up, up there, Marcus? What's going on? What's happening with you? What's up, man? First time we got Marcus in the house, man. Yeah, man, I've been, I'm in the cyber security class right now, man. So, you know, it'd be hard for me to jump on and talk, man. Right, right, right. Yeah, man, um, I just wanted to say salute, man. I, I really enjoyed that, man. It's good to see uh, see people doing good things. I mean, I'm going to home and keep I've been home for three years and he's already, you know what I'm saying, doing what he got to do. And that book is going to be cold. You know yeah, I mean? it's going to be a, it's gonna be a phenomenal movie. Yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be, and it's what's needed, man, you know. 
He ain't out here on no stupid stuff, you know what I mean? He got Miss Kenya in this corner. He's doing what he needs to do, you know what I mean? His story is going to go worldwide, you feel what I'm saying? And these kids, you know what I'm saying, these youngsters, they need to hear that, bro. They need to hear that, yeah, he did that. He came home, and he, you know what I'm saying, he's still on his ground. Didn't lose nothing, you know what I mean? He ain't got no sweat on him, so he didn't do it. Man. Somebody got to see that. I don't even know what that is. But, I think so really now, now, what I thought was dope was how you had uh, mentioned your memories as your intellectual properties. That was hot right there. Right, right. Appreciate that. Yeah, because you know that that just like get that empowers everybody in my that opinion. That empowers everybody. Yeah, yeah you can all use our memories as our intellectual property. It's just how it's all about how we paint the canvas for the world, you know. Right. And like you said. They did the same thing with the Godfather, all those mafia all movies that. and stuff like that. All that. You, man, you broke that down perfectly, bro. All that. Yes. No yes. difference. Right. Only difference is skin color. Right. And uh, I think it's time for L.A. to stand up and tell a story. You feel me? Like, all those East Coast guys have told their story, you know, but, you know, this is perfect timing, and I and I like the position that Big U was in, man. He didn't, he didn't uh, like, finagled and put himself – in a hell of a position because you know it used to be where it was my conception and other guys like that that you had to go through but you know it's kind of like the torch has been passed because those brothers you know are elder brothers now so i think that was uh that's gonna be a, a major play yeah he's been he's been in the game long enough to know now to just sit back and relax i mean he makes his moves but at the same time he know he don't have to present that aggressive behavior that we come from that we come from the Damu and Kiwi experience. A lot of us come out of those experiences thinking that everything has to be approached aggressively, you know. Okay. And that's not necessarily for the truth. Yeah, you can tell man that he's still humble, bro. He's a humble dude. You know what I mean? Right. And that's right. Like, right. after twenty nine years, bro, that's hard to do. Yeah, that's hard to do, man. <laughs> Yeah, I would say, man, Kenya drops dues, man, as far as, like, just, you know, let people know, uh, you know, just the lawyers you have to have retained even to start to explore a project. Like, you know, a lot of people think you can just run out here with a camera and throw it up on the Internet. It's not that easy, man. Right. Right. And, uh, Facts. And I got, like I said, I, I personally have to give a praise and a shout out to Kenya, man, because she yes. you know, gave some opportunity yes. to give, do like a little graphic artwork stuff like that man and um uh, you know she has a hell of a resume man she just on tour with um new edition then she's you know, she facetime one time it's on the movie set man I think uh with uh kevin hart and you know she's on the move man i'm like man it's a blessing man you see i have a i had to break down that sizzle because i know most of us didn't True. understand what that was right you know? right 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 facts and see, Big yeah. Melly Mel, you didn't you didn't done the same thing because quiet as, as it's kept. You know, like I told my wife years like a year or two ago when when Cav Mac first, you know, kind of bought Melly Mel on Melly Mel bought Compton with him. Man, right. that was like, hey, so so pretty soon it's going to be y'all time, too. You right. know what I'm saying? Because that was right. a very, you, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. So I appreciate you for that, man. You bought Compton with you, homie. I, I peeped that. That's right, man. What copy guy right there? Proud to be a veteran, man. Proud veteran right there. <laughs> right on, right on. <laughs> right on, right on, right on. Use that GI Bill, man. man. Make that GI Bill work. Don't just let it get on the shelf over there. That's why I'm in this class right now. That's why I'm in this class right now. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to hop off of here, big brother Melly Mel. I just wanted to shout Salute you out. Salute to you, Rocky. Assalamu alaikum. Salute. All right. Wa alaikum salam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace. Yeah, peace. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm trying to make it do what it do, man. Uh, doing this cyber right now, you know, because all this stuff that's on the internet and everything else, man, these kids need to know it. So how am I going to teach it to them if I don't know it? You know, I don't expect no other people to do it, especially not, you know. Well, you know how I feel know. about that, man. Everybody, everybody. Teach their own kids to set for us. We allow other people to teach our kids. That's what I'm saying. I can't. I can't let the pink toes do it because they don't teach them what they want to know. I'm gonna teach them exactly what you know. what I'm saying I get, and 
you know, they can go with it from there. So they get other opportunities. You know what I'm saying? Instead of looking at, you know what I'm saying, always in the music industry. I mean, that ain't the only outlet for us as melanated people. Marlena well, said, that's right, real estate. That part, that part. You know, I got a, uh, it's a couple of houses that I'm looking at right now. Um, just to get my hands, you know, man, my hands wet. You know, I've been overseas mm-hmm. for years, bro. You already know, I've been gone for years. So, you know, in houses and companies, like set money, Seven hundred thousand dollars. Ain't that something? You know, it's a trip. Man, man. my dad bought our house in 1968 for fifteen thousand dollars. Man, mom's bought one on Antwerp, right? She bought one on Antwerp, one one eight four two Antwerp, and she sold that when she bought one on on uh, on one hundred twentieth for one hundred thirty thousand. This is like in ninety. Man, that house almost worth six, six, what, six fifty, six seventy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I got <laughs> this one. Yeah, it's one on 122nd. That um, yeah, she's she's moving into real estate. I got a townhouse in Paramount that um, it's renting out. So you know what I mean. And I, that's I'm trying to do that now in Texas. So I'm pretty trying to do the same thing here. You know what I mean? Get in on the ground floor. Yeah, you know, Marlena. Marlena. And that's what I, I, I had. I talked to Bright all not too long ago, man. And I, he was like, man, what if all the homies just bought a house in their hood? Just bought a house in their hood. You man, we, we, could, we could say we rightfully own the neighborhood at that point. Spent years, spent years doing other stuff, you know, claiming that it. Why not own it? Yeah, AG, I was free. I, I put you on it. He said I had to leave Cali to own land. Sacrifice a lot, but I gained a whole lot more. That's hey, true, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, Money Mel. Look, man, and I tell anybody, if you know any veterans, if you know anybody that is a vet, jump on, if you can get them to go in with you on a home, it's no money down. If they are 100% disabled, if they're disabled, every state has um, dis- disabled uh, veteran laws and everything else. You just have to look. And that's the problem. Man, I got, I got that never used a GI bill. That's, that's the thing. You got GI bill, you got post line 11, and you have what is called the VA home loan. The VA home loan is where you don't have to put no money down and you don't have to pay a PMI, which is that, that primary mortgage insurance. So if you don't, if you got a house that they want 30,000 down, you don't have the 30,000, you put 10. They don't add to your mortgage about one hundred and eighty dollars a month just for insurance to make sure that you pay your mortgage. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? But if you're a vet, you don't have to do that. It's no money down. And in certain states, depending like I know Texas and Florida, you don't pay property tax. You don't pay no property tax. Well, Florida, said, look into the condos as well. Great. Oh, oh, a great yeah. Oh, yeah. Investment. oh yeah, I'm already looking at that. Um, they have some that they're building in uh in oh man, it's right around Austin in Texas. It's something that they're building and I'm trying to jump on those. My goal is to get about fifty acres of land and build on that. You know? So that way um that can make it low income, affordable housing. You know what I'm saying? For people that's that's really in need, man. Not people that's trying to get over on the system or nothing like that, but people that's really in need and need a helping hand. You know what I mean? Because if I didn't have OGs to teach me, I'd have been in the pen right now. I did, and I'd probably been dead. I know I'd have been dead. You know, yeah, they said the volume down. Though. Is that right? Can you hear me better now? Can they hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think you 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 go on the Bluetooth. Yeah, I got these headphones on. Yeah, that's the problem. This, this class playing in the background. Okay. Um, well, I ain't gonna hang you, bro. We're gonna um, go ahead and um. I appreciate you jumping on. I know oh, you yeah, got for sure, for sure, for sure. But no, nah, I'm gonna support them. You know, I'm gonna support them. Right on. Right on. I to appreciate it. One, one love. One love. Salute to the mail room door. <laughs> Mail you in nature, the mailroom room, man. You know what it is. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out to the mailroom nation, the mailroom goons. Professor Melly Mail, the hood postman. Be sure to click the notification bell, like, subscribe, and share. Drop a comment down below so when this dope content hit, it'll feel like it's the first of the 15. <laughs>
How you guys feeling this evening? I'm feeling absolutely amazing. Let me see. It's no land in Southern California besides up in the hills that deserve Desert, Palmdale, and Victorville. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I guess you got There's a lot of land, you know what I mean, everywhere. Man, they building over in Moreno Valley so tough, but they building warehouses in Moreno Valley. See that ad, Bodacious. What up, Bodacious? Man, you know, I had some technical difficulties trying to get it. My camera went out. You know what I'm saying? It's always something, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I just wanted to give a shout out because that was very informative to um, – the, you know, the, to the to the mailroom goons and, and, and everybody, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just like how our people are starting to get it, you know? And like you said, our stories are unique and we can't allow nobody else to, to, to tell our story, you know, because we no. um, basically, you know, we when we do that, we always get the the uh, the bad end of the deal. You know what I'm saying? As far as business concerned, we don't get the royalties or the money that, you know, to just do. And uh, like you say, you get some white dude that, that distort it, you know, and they want to cut and put the degradation of our people involved in it, you know, like we these beasts. Uh -huh. and that, it was just so uh, talking to Ron, Ron and them. Uh, I just, you know, it, it just give me hope. It gives me um, a lot of uh, enthusiasm for me to do something, you know. Right. Um, and it just, you know, it's just like it, it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Right. Certain, right, right. We had to talk this morning. We had to talk this morning about certain entities we trying to do. And some people just don't have the enthusiasm. Right. They just, you know, they don't get it or, you know, it ain't for everybody. It ain't for everybody. So that that just bo boosted my morale up, you know, especially when you start talking about my OG homeboys, you know, Raymond and Tookie and because uh, we got so many of them and they're not, you know, it's not this image that, they, that people try to paint on them that uh we just started something that was so detrimental to us to where we're we're like we feed off each other like 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 vultures that's and that's very not, more. That's not the case um like ron ron said as far as the pam the family background we all Melly, you know we all come from great parents we come from a great background i had a mother and a father in the hood uh uh, uh and and that just was awesome i never i knew what a hungry day was you know, it actually, to be honest, I had to basically uh, um, kind of come down some as far as to hang out with some of the homies because I didn't want to seem like I was bougie. You know what I'm saying? Because we had everything. We had bikes, mini bikes, low riders, cars, everything. So I had to like kind of, uh, and, and, and you know, not belittle myself, but I kind of wanted to fit in to where Cause it, it, it's simple. When you start hanging around with certain cats, and these cats got your back through thick and thin, through when you uh, anything that you go through in life, even from grade school to to today, you fall in love with these people. And I ain't talking about hanky panky or none of this weird old stuff. I'm talking about, but there's a, a certain love that just like now when I see certain people, I'm like, what's up, love one, you know, and I, and that's sincerity, because it's like you and I, we weather the storm. A lot of people don't get to survive off of. So I'm like, this this is just a, so um that cliche that it's a single parent mother or um you know you people were uh uh let me, let, me, let me say this right quick, Bo Nations. Uh shout out to the mailroom nation, shout out to mailroom game. Look, guys, I go through a lot to hit, bring everybody on these um uh, live feeds and also go out and do the videos you guys have no idea what it takes for me to put all this time and effort into it but you know i don't ever ask you guys for anything but i notice a lot of people just don't i don't know why people don't support us you know what i mean and i'm not asking you to begging or any of that but if you guys you know if you feel you know what i mean you want to support support if you don't that's fine too but Man, please, it's free to click the notification bell. It's free to kick a thumbs up. It's free to do that. You know what I mean? But if you want to leave a donation, that's fine, too. But it'll only help me improve upon what I'm already done. In other words, I want to give you the best. And I, wanna, I want you guys to have the best experience when I come on and bring these individuals. I'm going after some top-notch individuals 
in a couple of days. I'm talking about people that were right next to Raymond. I got them lined up, you know what I mean? But it's going to take me, it's going to take me a lot to get to them and do all that, but I got to go get it because of their status, you know what I mean? I can't, I can't reveal their names at this point because people behind the scenes, they go back and they try to slick you and <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a dirty game now. <laughs> I ain't going to say it ain't no dirty game, but yeah, but you guys know what I'm saying. So I appreciate anybody who donate or spend their time, press the thumbs up, click the notification bell, especially my moderators, uh, Postmaster General Marlena Williams, E Money, uh, Mike Mars, and, and, and Johnny Sullivan, and everybody, and Michelle. Shout out to Glenn Adams, man. I appreciate you. And everybody that comes in and, and fly eagle, all you guys that come over here and, and, and keep up the good work, man. And uh Let's get back to Bodacious, stuff. <laughs> Go ahead, Bodacious. Sorry about that. You know, I feel your pain, Belly. You know, and, and, and it is like unsung. You know, when yeah. you see these stories of unsung and you see what we, especially us as a people, that don't come together. And I think that's changing. I think it's changing. I think we're going to get it, you know. Uh, you 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 don't understand the, the, the sacrifice that we make just to do any little project. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I, I don't know. If it's the crab in the basket scenario, I know, Marcus. Negro, it. It's just we don't support each other. We have to get rid of that. I I, I don't know. I don't well, know. They, they asked you to tell a Raymond or Tookie story. Well, the, the the this is the thing because the story you have to remember. I was like thirteen, uh -huh. you know, and it, it it was just more than Raymond and Tookie, but at that time. We would go to uh, uh, watch the Watts uh, Festival or the Watts Parade. Mm -hmm. And this is where the East Side and the West Side would, would meet up at conference. Right. You know, Matt Thomas, Salty, all of them. And we basically had to sneak because they, they looked out for us. They were like, no, nah, man, you know, I know your brother's butt. You know what I'm saying? And all this. Take your little bad butt home. You know? Yeah, we used to catch it, man. I was sitting, huh? Cause I think I got to. I'm 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 63. All of you, Bodacious. I'm 61. Okay, so you a couple of years behind me. Yes, right. yes. So right. yeah, we had to keep, we had to catch it. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. we, we were the baby cribs. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And we wanted, you know, we wanted to show off a little bit with them. You know what I'm saying? And one thing about the, when when I would meet these dudes, it would be they were like idols to us. Cause Tr Tookie is basically the guy. That started all the Crips to getting buff, to lifting weights. Yes, that, that was like took that from him. right. That, that was like the blue rag. Now Raymond had hands, but you got to remember, I was a young kid, and I'm looking from the outside in. Now Sweat and them would tell me stories when they went and did stuff, but it was just certain things we meet up, and then it was it was cool because they would end up coming on Pan Airs. and you know Pan Airs was a street. That all the low riders and the girls. Yeah, that's what Wolf, Wolf and all them was hanging over there, Big Wolf. Right. Everybody, could, it, it, yeah. this, is what you're, this is what people don't understand. At one time, you could go on Pan Airs and you would see Puddin', you would see uh, 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 Cynthia's other brother, uh, 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 oh, Bo Pete, Bo Pete, Bo Pete, Tookie, Raymond, Kevin, the other big dark skinned wolf, my brother Dean, Wild Man, and all of them. Uh, Donnie Bernard from Fruit Town. Yeah. And, I mean, all of them would be right there. These was like, and they wasn't tripping on nobody or nothing like that. They were trying to get their cars fixed because Tookie had a 62 Chevy. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? When they opened the boys' home in Compton. Uh -huh. And, he, you know, and these dudes, when you meet them, like I said, you would see Tookie uh, walk, everybody would walk to Jesse's liquor store, you know, up by Iowa Market. Uh huh. And you would see these dudes just like, like living legends. You know what I'm saying? At that time, they wasn't, they were just, like dudes that you want yeah, because Jesse with. Morgan was right there on the corner of Penny's. Yeah, yeah, Iowa Market. It was put on the uh, Iowa Market. Jesse Wicker yeah. store. because right. that's where my brother Dean worked at, and he would right. give him all kind of wine and beer, and, and you know, and we would drink silver satin, and silver satin was crib juice. You know, like when I see Crip Mac drinking his juice, we had silver satin. That right, was right, 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 right. And we used to kill the bird because it had a little red cross on it, and we called it killing the bird. We scratched the red cross off of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and we to Mike Mark. So it, it, I met these dudes, and I, you would see them at all the concerts, like Tookie and, 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 and Jamel. 
we'd be at the forum and the lights would come on in the intermission and they'd be up there flexing. You know what I'm saying? He had his big trench coats on and I just happened to like be kind of trying to get to him and Raymond and all them dudes. But the, the dudes were like, they, they were humble dudes. I mean, they wasn't just like beast, but like Tookie had a, like a, a, a attitude to where you couldn't approach him and be a mark. You know what I'm saying? Like dudes would try to like, I seen him slap a dude on Pan Ayers, right on the corner of Pan Ayers and the laundry. I mean, Pan Ayers and, uh, and Elizabeth at the stop sign where a dude just came up and like, oh, you think you buff? You know what I'm saying? And he just like pumped it out. My, you know what I'm saying? I don't do pumps. You know what I'm saying? So we looked at that as like, oh, man, he slapped that dude out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? So John that's Sullivan. how I encountered with them. You know, it, 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 it was always be at the parades or the concerts. Uh, where we would meet up. Uh, he talking about Featherstone. He always called him. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm talking. Yeah, he talking about right. Featherstone. <laughs> right. That's, that's my brother-in-law. You know. What I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You're uh, Featherstone and, and Terrence McRae and Old right, right. and yeah. Killer Mike. I, you know what? I, I I see I see Mike now on uh, Facebook because I ain't seen him in person in a long time. Yeah. But, you know. Um. It, it, it's it's funny because me and Tick be talking about certain stuff, and I'll wait to, you know, maybe you talk to Tick and certain thing. I don't want to spoil it for him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, well, let him know. Go ahead and let him know. I'll be there next week. Okay, yeah. Next week. Right, so we'll put some of that out there then. Okay. But, um, it's just certain things like with, 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 with these guys that we don't want to paint a picture that ain't authentic. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? And, and to this day, I'm thinking that Tookie was such a, a, a force and Raymond and them that, you know, I always think of the conspiracy behind it. They have to get rid of these dudes. Like the rest, anybody else, they can get a collective. Well, Malcolm, any, any, any Africans in America or, or blacks or whatever they want to be called, Israel, the Hebrew, Israelites or whatever, you know, that once you start something, a movement or, or something that they feel is a threat. Thank you, to Michelle. Their, to their institution. And the way life is, they try to put a stop to it. And that's why uh, a lot of people that label things, they infiltrate and all that. But we went through that before. But There you go, Bodacious. There you go. That's your spot, isn't it? What, the cornet? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we used to hang there. Tell Johnny Sullivan, yeah, we used to hang there, you know what I'm saying? In front of that, get drunk, kicking it, you know, putting in work, whatever we did, whatever we did. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? And um, but I don't want to get off. There's no regular, ain't, ain't no regular people just going up in the car net. You have to be no, part of that, no. that section. Of <laughs> and, and it's funny because when I be talking to certain homies, uh, G and, and you and certain homies, we didn't allow busters to hang out. We didn't allow no. certain people that we didn't know to hang out. So you couldn't come in there and just kick it if you didn't have, like when we go to the town, you know what I'm saying? Once we got there, it was it was all kind of love, but then it would be cool. And I'd be like, well, who was that? I don't know him. Cause there's always ops coming through there. You right. know, they police or go to pod rules or whatever. And so, you know, any anybody we don't know, we, we they got to be the mother people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what is he doing right here? Who right. knows? Right. You know? Right. And 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 that's when. Uh, we stayed to ourselves. Like I said, we, we wouldn't allow uh, be certain behaviors like that was going on today. And we trying to like trying to get something going, but we didn't allow certain behavior. Just like when you, when you came, when I came up and it was certain meetings we had to go to. It's just like they say, it's a crib meeting in South Park. You had to be there. Yeah, we know Big Ruben Connors from the Grandies. You know, that's Big Booby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you you had to be there. You know what I'm saying? So if you wasn't there, there was like, well, what's your, why you didn't show up? You know, are you with this crypt thing or not? And, but it was such a family to the point to where they had your back, you know? Of course we heard of Dodge City. I got a few homies from Dodge City that I was in jail with. Ain't that in, uh, Smokey. Dodge City is in what? Um, Out there in San Pedro. San Pedro, yeah. My the project's boy. over there. Well, I'm Smokey buddy, from yeah. Smokey from Smokey from Dodge City. Yeah, right. Quick and them, my buddy, my little homie, uh, Quick. When we was in uh, Calipatria together, and he was from Dodge City, he was a solid dude, solid youngster that we kind of had to put under the wing a little bit because certain people he was like 
going to school and studying and certain dudes was like coming at him that was, I don't know if that was the ops or whatever. So we just said, man, you know, that's my buddy. You know, he with us. So yeah, y'all get up off him. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, was it was simple as that. Just like Goldie that was from Park Village, the white boy. You know what I'm saying? He was in the pit with us. And uh some people approached him and was like, no, he a crip. What the and you know this for a fact. When you talk about race and the Crips, there's been Crips of every color in LA and Compton. We had Samoan <clears throat> from Park Village to Fubu now, Dragon all them, Avapu. We had Mexicans, Puli, Uli, and, 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 and y'all had Mexicans and all that. Grape Street, some of them still have Mexicans in they set. We had white boys, you know, white boy Donald, uh, um, Goldie, um, and a, a big Deesman that was Pyro. You remember white yeah, boy? Yeah, I remember yeah. Deesman in, in that and red firebird. We used to be on Deesman. <laughs> <laughs> See that red firebird? We yeah. lost him. <laughs> he was with the business too, though. He was with the business too. He, yeah, yeah. Man, them dudes was cut from a different cloth. And it's it's sad to see how, because DuPont always, you know, when I talk to DuPont, he, he a more now. And uh, he just say, hey, Prater. You know, they call me Prater Blood. You know, so they say Prater right. Blood. Could you imagine if we all would have got together at one time and was like, cool? i like, we was, but it didn't last long. Uh, but it, it, it would have been awesome. You know what I'm saying? We would have been uh, I, don't, I think we would have been untouchable. We'd have been like the mob. We'd have been, or, or better than the mob, because the mob, I, like I said, I used to write, you know, read in, in the Reader's Digest when the mob say, hey, if the Crips, they kill for no reason at all. They just out there killing. We kill for business. But if they right. ever got to kill, they'd be way powerful than we was. You know, and that's what we don't, we fail to realize that we are, because we are rebellious. And that's one thing about the Negro, even the Negro, they never assimilated in America. They never just came downright patriots to the point to where we got assimilated and, and, and there's no such thing as an oppressor or none of that. We never got assimilated. So that, I can get that to us as a people that um, we pretty much uh, know we, we, we're on a mission and we know who our opposition is. We know who the real enemy is. We just got to stop being in fear of them. I think they spooked, they spooked us with these... Um, with religion, you know what I'm saying, with the heaven and hell scenario. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Cedar Block, Palmer Block, Neighborhood, Paru, and Nestor all share the same hood. They basically it's the same thing with uh with the neighborhoods, the Kellys, and the Lang Drives. Yeah, and the South. You can't leave yeah. the South out. Yeah, we all share the same. We all hung on yeah. with coal and everything else. Right. You know, but then, like I said, the division came. So, but um, yeah, man, I I, I really appreciate. Um, Ron Ron, and what was the female name? Fly Kenya. Kenya, Kenya. She's, Kenya. A, she's executive producer on the uh, first of the trip, uh, Raymond Washington. Yeah, good. And um, yeah, you'll get a chance to meet her. Don't worry, you get a chance, yeah, to meet her. yeah. Uh, because um, there's a lot of projects going on now to where we're doing it ourselves. We're she's one of, the, one of the people I was thinking about, you know, when I was talking yeah. to you. Yeah. And and, yeah. and and the film crew that I actually know, a cat named Gerard, uh, I forget the name of the, the film crew, but uh, yeah, I, we I we know. We're going to switch over because I can't take it no more. You know, when I get fed up, I'm fed up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, and that's all good. That's all yeah. good. And they yeah. got, like I said, we'll, you know, we'll talk behind the scenes. We don't want to let our little thing out, you know what I'm saying? Right, but right, right, right. It's all good, homie. And that, that inspired me. It right. really inspired me to, and, and like I said, everything is for a reason. I believe in the universe. You, these things, we don't run across these people for no reason, no apparent reason, Melly. So, uh -uh. you know, it's all good. And, uh, and like then I, you got, we got my son too, because once my son finishes his project, he's going to be looking to do multiple projects. He, right. Now, his, to talk about your son just a bit, because I read some article on him. Is that the one that escaped from the prison? Yeah. Yeah. Did I send you the trailer to that? Yeah, well, I, I seen a little bit of something, but like I said, I I've seen enough to where I'll wait for the movie. You know okay, <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah, that was interesting. You know what I'm saying? That was cool. I was like, okay, uh, he's like uh, the brothers that escape from Alcatraz, same kind of stuff. Right, right, right. You know, and like you say, they get all they just do. The Compton Drive-In was on Rosecrans, bro. 
in uh, Luda's Park neighborhood. L well, between Luda's Park and what we know as the mob. Well, it was all Luda's Park back yeah, then. Yeah, so I'm going to keep, I'm gonna keep Park that Luda's Park. Yeah. Luda's Park made the mob. We used to go on K Street, take, just happen to have a girlfriend on K Street. You know what I'm saying? And we had, we, <laughs> and we go, we sneak over there, put it that way. We sneak over there. Say what they would do with us, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you, you know, it's just like Big Ant now. They lived in their hood. They lived on Bradfield, right by down the street from Cynthia, none of that. Right. And we had over there. Uh, Tony Toads and them lived in our hood. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and, and, and it, it just goes back to show that as a collective, there was a lot of respect for the older original power rules that looked out for us to not let us get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I remember that. when that situation with Tony Toes, uh put that work in. What was that on on Thorson? That was, uh, that was uh, Caress. Caress. Yeah, second house from the corner. Yeah. 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 Uh, down, was there were two twin brothers, wasn't it? Yeah, they, that was that was their own people. The Smiths that stayed over there on uh, Pan Am's across the laundry on the other side. You know, once you cross the laundry, you kind of in between you on their side. Because Holly right there, you know, Hollywood, it wasn't no Hollywood then, but uh, they was on across the um, the street on Pan Am's, you know. So they got into it behind some, I don't know what it was. And it was, oh, it was, it was Pyro's Pyro. on Pyro's. Yeah, yeah, that was Pyro on Pyro. Mm. You know, that that didn't have nothing to do. And matter of fact, I seen I seen Sullivan, the one, the other Sullivan that his brother got killed. I seen him on uh, not too long ago getting some chicken sausage over there by uh, by the Nickersons not too long ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know I'm trying. Yeah, to everybody be going after them chicken sausages. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to creep over in. Over there for 120th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he tapped me on Charles the shoulder. Taco Pete. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. That's where I was at, and he seen me. He seen me, he was like, man, you're looking good, bub. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm just, you know, me and my wife were together. I'm like, I'm just coming to get some sis. They said, man, how moms and them do? Because they know us. You yeah, know West Side Pyro is a nice neighborhood. So I, I, that's why I, I told my, my wife, you know, sometimes you, I'll sit in the car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, I, you know, I don't want to get it. But like I said, so much time has elapsed to where ain't nobody our age tripping at all. Not like that. Right. So, uh, I remember when, uh, what's up, uh, Southside Club, what's going on with you, bro? Uh, so I remember the time when, uh, uh, uh Tookie, yeah, right? Yeah, two, five, Tookie, two, two. Tookie was, uh, 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 uh crushing on, um, Beverly Butler, right? Right, 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 right. Crushing right. on Beverly Butler. But Beverly Butler, brother was Jimmy Butler, Cash. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. So, you know, that was a conflict of interest right there. You know what I mean? And I think Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy really didn't like that. You know what I mean? So what happened, we all around there by, by Pine and Santa Fe. Right. And right. Uh, up there by the liquor store right there. Jimmy hit, Jimmy come flying up there. I don't know what got into Jimmy that day, but Jimmy had forgot that, uh, I guess he forgot about being a Pyro. <laughs> he came, I mean, you know, because he, he coming up there because his sister, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. And uh, he ran up on Tookie, man, and, and, and Tookie just kind of just backhanded. <laughs> yeah, Tookie slapped so, you out. He was slapped so, you out. So, you know what I mean? And Jimmy, and, and don't get me wrong, Jimmy, Jimmy can fight, you know what I mean? But Tookie laid one of them big old gloves on you, man. That man hand was like a glove, like a back catcher's mitt. But Tookie could fight too. That's the thing. Raymond and Tookie and them, they had, they like I said, they had knockouts. You know what That's I'm saying? What I'm trying to tell you, that, man, that man had a that man that man had a paw like a back catcher's glove, man. Yeah. And, and he had some Popeye arms, you know, like no, Popeye, you know, yeah. like, he, like he been eating spinach all his life or something. <laughs> man, and I seen Jimmy, me, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy was laid out, bro. You know, yeah. But I, yeah. I understood it. You know what I mean. I felt because Jimmy, Jimmy, my partner. You know what I mean. I didn't want to see nothing happen. I knew Jimmy didn't have no business up there, man. But you know, because his sister, you know, he had to take the position he took. You know. Yeah. 
But a lot of times, that's what happened in this stuff, man. And especially with, the, with with some of these females, they got to be careful who they associate with. They, 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 they align themselves like with, you know. I had a girl from me in Gangsta Ben from the south. I had he he was going with Paula, this female named Paula Adams. That was Indian bad, you know. what I'm saying I was going with her sister Joyce, and we it, they stayed on. They stayed across right behind Charlie New and them. Across Compton Boulevard. Charlie New? <laughs> yeah. They Charlie started right behind Charlie New and yeah, Robert Rose. Yeah. And that's Power Hood. That's what I'm saying. That's their hood. I, was I, talk, I talked to Robert Earl not too long ago. Yeah. Me and Bruno talked to him at the park one day. Not oh, yeah. Park, but that was about six months ago. And um, he had told me he just got a new car. But I, because Richard and my brother Spunk was in the same grade. And we would walk to in their hood and go over their house. And it would be like I say, you you you'd see Jimmy Butler. Uh, who else used to be over there? Lug and Jug. Uh, uh, um, you know they lived in my neighborhood too on Willow. Right. Um, Lil George. And uh, he was uh, a pet. Jimmy, Big Jeffrey. All of them would be over there, and uh -huh. I would they would see me come in because, matter of fact, it'd be me, Timothy Blunt, and Gangsta Ben, and Volk. And Spud, because their girlfriend stayed. Timothy Blunt was a U.S. boy. Yeah, yeah, but he turned crip. Uh huh. Yeah, remember he had he started hanging with Bullet. Remember yeah, he the one that had Bullet, the dog. He, Bullet used to give. He used to let Bullet use the the black morning collar. We used to go to parties in Long Beach. Right, right. Because he had the pet bull with the glasses and uh -huh. the blue rag around his neck. Right. And stuff like that. So it, it was always you run across these dudes, and 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 when you ran across them. It wasn't like they just attacked anybody, you know what I'm saying? You had to actually like <laughs> diss or say something wrong, and they would let you get that fade. Like, uh, me and you pray their head up. Okay, win, lose, or draw. If you lost, you see him again. Like, can I get that again? You know, and, and and only when the gunplay came in is when they start jumping on you, or when they start trying to stab you or hit your head with poles and bottles. Then I was like, cause okay. Uh, you know, it's, or it's too many of y'all, you know, stuff like that. So it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, every now and then you had gunplay. Then they didn't have the militarized weapons that they have now. You know what I'm saying? Right, the, right, right. You had a 357 and a shotgun, you was, you was king. You know, <laughs> you know that was just like having a, a, a AK-47. And then if you, you had a four, if you had a 44, oh. you was really yeah. king. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be your reputation because Putin right. kept that 45. Right. He kept that 45 on at all times, you know. And, and he, like I said, we, we was in junior high school, and he'd pull up and take his beanie off and slap cats. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, man, I'm a kid. You know what I'm saying? But then you had cats that would, like, raw up on him, like, homie, this script, you know? And he like, yeah, you crab, just put in power room by itself. And put and try to steal on me at the Compton High, Compton Dominguez game, man. I I, I left really? I left the crib side and went on Dominguez side, man. We, you know, try feeling myself, you know what I mean? I go over there, man. I I I'm at the front, right? I yeah. don't see none of them, man. But when I went down through the, the little tunnel and went to the back side, oh yeah. Man, the yeah. whole back side was pulled back. <laughs> hey, I don't know if you was at the game with us at Dominguez. When it was Dominguez and Compton at Dominguez. Uh, and we said it was Dominguez side. And it was like me, Martel, Spud, Tig. I don't know. It was, a, it was a lot of them. So it was, it was like 20 of them. They came in there. So dude, I Icky had a red rag suit on with that leather coat on with the one glove. You know, uh -huh. one glove, Icky Dawson. And they came in there. It was at least 50 of them. We hit that back. <laughs> Remember the hole in the back? <laughs> we, all we had to do was get to the drive. Right, 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 right. right. Uh, and that hole was in that back gate for a reason. Man, man, man! I was like, I, did they? I don't think they caught nobody that night, but they cleared the crowd. They cleared that whole bleacher. Right. They cleared that whole bleacher that night. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh man, we just got to get to the drive. So once we get to the drive, we can go. You know, you can put out that alert. You get that whistle. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and, and they coming. They coming. <laughs> <laughs> That was it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We had Crip whistle. Crip whistle. Yeah, exactly. And we knew, everybody knew what that meant. Right. Everybody knew what that meant. Right. 
That was a call. Yeah. That was a come to call, man. That was like, man, yeah. we need help. That was our blowing the trumpet. That was our right. blowing the trumpet. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of cats, they ain't up on that. They ain't up on that. But it was, it was, it was interesting. Like I say, can you imagine this all be put in footage and movies? That's that's, that's hard to put. Let me say this, Brian Johnson. That's hard to answer because they both was they rightful hand guards in their own way. Tookie was like a mainly a knockout person, but Raymond Washington was a squabbler. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was a squabbler. If you want to compare the two, one was George Foreman and one was Mike Tyson. I would say yeah. Tookie was more like George Foreman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That it hit you so hard, you'd be just, that's, that's it. That's it. There ain't no coming back. And he, like I said, uh, it's some of them. Yeah, dudes, you're right. Spook set by the door. It's, it's some of them dudes on the other side that was that, that had hands too. Yeah. Like a uh, 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 time bomb. Oh, yeah. And time yeah, we went to school with hands. time bomb. Huh? I say we went to school with time yeah. bomb. Yeah. I, I said he knocked some crips out in, in, in the parking lot at, at the Megan's. Hey, but I never forget that day Volcano checked in school. Oh, man. Well, Volcano set up, upset the whole school. I said, man, we're going to be fighting today. Yeah, we exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I, like I said, it was, it's interesting because just like when you go to their assemblies, Dominguez assemblies was, it, it, the whole side is red. Uh -huh. you know? And you'd see Jody and them walking there with blue rags on their head. Right. And I was like, well, let's go. It's no going down. Ain't no negotiating. You know what I'm saying? Pick, you know, pick your pick your poison. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. You know, well, Tito, Tito, Tito used to keep that blue rag in his back pocket. Yeah, yeah. They wasn't wasn't nobody backing down. That no. was the thing on, on the east side. Wasn't nobody backing up. I remember one like, day half down. step, half step got mad, pulled out his rag and just start popping it. Popping yeah. I said, that half step. What's wrong? Let me <laughs> You know what? I didn't know half step do karate until yeah. uh, I seen him get out before. I didn't know. Yeah. He but he, I should have knew because he hung with Chick every day. Yeah, we called him half step because he had a half a walk. He had a half. Right. right. His, his leg was messed up on one side, but he kicked you with that. You was hit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and had the heart to go with it. Yeah. yeah. You know what happened to half step? He died. He died uh in a motorcycle accident. Oh man. I, I think he was driving and had been drinking on a motorcycle, hit a tree and killed himself. Wow. Yeah, that's a trip. That's a trip. You know? Uh, and, and and it's, you know, we gotta let don't let these dudes just be in vain. You know, because they were they were part of the structure to help uh -huh. you survive. Uh -huh. You know. You know, it, it was it was a trip. And, and if like I said, if these youngsters could see through my glasses and my lens. They wouldn't do half the day because they'd have love for everybody that they knew, you know. Right. And that that's that was uh, it was a family structure, and that's why homies got so influenced about hanging out. It wasn't no single parent mother situation. That that is a myth. Right now, I think it's always supposed to be a man in the house. I'm not gonna go against because that's the way God made it. You know. I'm so, gonna tell you who else, man. I I, I didn't mind going down with was Chris, Chris Walker. Oh yeah, yeah. And you know, Chris never gang banged. I know, he but they thought he did. And oh, he had a left. He I see. <laughs> you was there. I think you was there, buddy, when we was behind the gym. When yeah, they I was there. They tried. They, they tried to ambush us. No, they they don't try. They ambush us. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but Pee Wee Pee Wee had them scissors in his back pocket. And Sam Stewart had a razor, and he right. ripped you through the home, got a cut on his face right now. Right. Sam Stewart with that straight razor right, right there. Right. And I forgot who ran up on me, but whoever ran up on me, and when I finished with him, he had a girl that I was talking to at Dominguez, this female, and that was her brother. And she stopped giving me action because, like, he beat my brother up. I'm like, they can't jump on us. <laughs> we just had hands. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she never even talked. She's like, I ain't messing with you no more. You know, she would come over there because Chubb had her friend. Uh -huh. And they would, they would come to the coronets. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, no, nah, I remember you beat my brother up. I'm not talking to you. And she was bad too, Melly. You know what I'm saying? I was like, that's messed up. And they started. Because like I said, we shooting dice. You know what I'm saying? Behind the gym. Exactly. And, and exactly. Behind, the house, behind the basketball gym. Uh, uh, the McQuillas. 
it was it was quite that was they school though. You know what I'm saying? That was right. and and like I said, you had Tina and them, their homegirls that were with them. Some of them started dating cats on our side. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like Pam was going with little George, but you know, she was like coming over there with like females hey, coming over there. Hey, 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 what you got? I was going with uh Donna Pope, Randy's girl. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, See, I was going with Donna. Donna See, Donna that, Pope. That, 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 hey, that one was, day, one day. One day, uh, uh, I'm over there and he pulls up, and and he looking, and I'm looking, I'm like, like thinking, like, who, who, what is he doing over here? And he's right. probably thinking the same thing about me. And, and and she, come out, man, and she seemed like she was so confused, she didn't know what to do. But me and him wound up talking, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, and he, he like, hey, he, he always called me male male. <laughs> and and Scrooge. That's my girl. I said, man, young girl. That's my girl. <laughs> that, 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 that's when you cross wires. That and they did that. I don't know if it was intentional. I don't know if they just liked the uh, gangster, how we kept it gangster. Because after we took that picture, you know, that hood picture, nobody could duplicate that. Then we took that hood picture. A lot of the women was coming to our side, you know, from their side. You know what I'm saying? And and even Michelle has stayed across the street from Randy and Donald. Uh-huh. Uh, I think that's St. Louis or something that they had in over there. They stayed on that street. Uh -huh. That's Scrancho, that's baby mama. That's wow. the baby, baby mama. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, wow, are we really getting ready to do this? You know what I'm saying? Because this is dangerous. You know? But it, it, the funny part is they didn't trip. If, if, if you wasn't really do something. What do you say? My first cousin is Kevin. I grew yeah. Up. That's where Elbow started. Who was that? Elbow. No, I'm talking about they wrote this. What's that? Carnell Norman? Yeah. Well, he got to know me then. He got to know the Praters. Because we stayed right there on Penn and Elizabeth. You know, for years since, since it was white. Before Kevin never even moved over there. So he got to know my family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Me and uh, Randy became friends, though, I there, man. You know, he, he wound up with the girl and I had to move on. <laughs> well, him and I, you know, they tried to get me one day at Dominguez. And, you know, I ended up doing what I had to do. Right. But after, after that, after that, because I don't want to glorify the uh, set trip or nothing like that. After that. I see him a couple of times with him and Ack and all them over in our hood. And um, I was I told a lot of the cats, don't mess with him. Because I had cats that was like, man, well, what you want to do? Nah, don't mess with him. He ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. That was years ago, you know. And we ran across each other by ourselves, you know. And he asked me a question. I asked him one. He's strapped. I'm strapped. I'm like, well, I'm just, you know, what's up? He was like, we talked. And that was it. I'm talking about until he died. If not his brother Donald, his brother Donald would come in the hood on Bennett, right in the heart of our hood. Because Willow was his cousin that stayed right next door to the homies. You know what I'm saying? She had that red Camaro. And he'd pull up, and we done had shootouts and everything right there with him. You know what I'm saying? He'd get out the car and he'd just start busting, boom, boom, on us. And we just had to you know it. So we were just like, okay. So it was like with him, Donald was like, I don't know. He, I guess he never accepted the fact of how me and Randy got, had got into it. He never accepted that. And that was his twin brother. I understood that. But it was on site with him and, 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 and with me and him. And, I, and it was crazy because I'd be standing out there, he'd just come bust, boom, 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 boom. And I'd be like, okay, I, I see you. And I it's, he'd come and I'd catch him. Because most of the time, like I said, in the hood, you know, we always stayed ready. We stayed ready. Right. You know? I, uh, you know, I ride home. I'd have a, a single shot, shot twelve gauge on the handlebars, because I knew going out there is they coming, and they catch. And, and this is the cold part about it. I'm being rat rolling with it. We got the twelve gauge. I got it in a brown paper bag. They run me over. The gun flew all up in the sky. Didn't do me no good that day. You know what I'm saying? Cadillac right. hit me. I was hit me in the car. Boom! I'm like, fly the man rat. Shotgun go way in there. I'm like, wow. I couldn't even get to it. I could then just kept going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, okay. So wasn't no negotiating. You know, when you got in the thick of it, wasn't no, you know, you know yeah. what it was like. 
Yeah. Well, Seth's bodacious, man. We don't spend quite a bit of time in it, man. I got to shut it down, bro. I appreciate you jumping on the live with me, man. As always, it's always good, bro. You know, we're going to link up, man. But look you forward to me down. being there next week, bro. Okay. Okay, tune in, Professor Melly Mel, the Hood Post, man. You know the vibe. Shout out to the Mailroom Nation, the Mailroom Room, Bobby Yay, Cornell, Brian Johnson, Cynthia Nunn, True Blue, mm -hmm. uh, E Money, of course, the Spook the Set by the Door, Dub, in effect. What's good, bro? Trench, what's up with you, man? Uh, Marlena Williams, shout out to Marlena Williams, Postmaster General, uh, Crip Old, Southside Company, Crip. Yes, sir. We we feel you out there, bro. So until the next time, we'll be back tomorrow. We, we'll tune in tomorrow. I got uh, Tesla Figueroa coming on, man. She's going to explain this political thing in a way that you guys have never heard. So stay excited for that. We'll be back tomorrow. Until then, somebody locked the door. We out.